You did this with that song. Your song, they played your song this morning. That's what... <laughs> I've been meeting with the, the elders and the deacons over the past couple of weeks. I met with the elders a few weeks ago and I met with the deacons last week. Mike is not here, otherwise I would announce our newest two deacons. I'll announce when he's here and you can all just act surprised. But there's a, there's, a, there's a series that I want to begin today. I actually began laying the groundwork for it last week. Uh, it's a direction that I believe God is taking us. And it's a, a direction that's not just, for, it's not just for Solomon's porch. It's not just for us individually. I believe it's a message that God is speaking across the church body. There's this verse in Jeremiah, in verse 27. Uh, verse, uh, Jeremiah 29 verse 7 where it says and seek the peace for the, of the city that I've planted you for when you find its peace you'll find your peace there's something about that, that, that there's something about caring about those around you that actually brings victory in your own life if you read the, the, the original text there that that was written in and that word city it's, it's, not, it's not just the city that you would think about like Fall River, Massachusetts. It's that area that you're, that's under your guard. So whether it's your family or your workplace or, or wherever it is that you are, seek the peace of that place because in that place you'll find your peace. But what happens is we get wrapped up in our own junk. And, and that's why last week was so important to understand that God wants us free and that he'll travel over and over and over and he'll leave the crowds just to get to the one. I mean, you saw, we talked about this last week. Jesus left thousands of people to go across this tempest storm to get to the one. He's all about the one. Why? Because that one actually affected the whole city where he was at. You saw that. He said, Jesus, I'm clear now. I'm clean. I want to come with you. And Jesus said, no, 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 you stay here. Stay in this place, because in this place, you're going to tell everybody what I did for you. And he wants us free. I want to get into this story a little bit. It's in 1 Samuel 9. And I'll give you a little bit of context to where we're at. The Israelites wanted a king. They were, they were from the time where, where they had judges over them and the judges would, would set how things were, but they wanted to be like everybody else, so they were demanding a king. Imagine that. They were demanding a king. They had God himself and they said, don't we want a king like everyone else does? We're stupid sometimes. <laughs> Either way. So God had, had picked out somebody very specific for this. And it says that he picked out the son of a man that had great power. So he had picked out this man whose father, was na his name was Kish, and he was a man of great power, great authority. Saul was his name. And the Bible says that he was a choice and handsome man, tall, beautiful, above everyone else, kind of like me. He said he picked him out, and this was the guy that was going to be king. Now, he didn't know it at the time, but this is the guy that God had picked out. Saul's father, Kish, had lost some donkeys, and the donkeys were missing. Now, donkeys were used for quite a bit back then. It was a source of income. It was a source of transportation. It was, they were important. And Kish had lost this set of donkeys. Imagine that, like a, losing a set of cufflinks or something. He lost a set of donkeys. They were gone, either way. And he said to his son, Saul, I want you to go. Grab a servant, and I want you to take off and go find them. Okay? So Saul grabs this servant and takes off to go look for these donkeys. All right? And that's where we're going to pick up where we're at today. 
It's in verse 4. It says, So we passed through the mountains of Ephraim and through the land of Shalisha, but they didn't find them, couldn't find the donkeys. Then they passed through the land of Shalem, and they were not there. Then he passed to the land of the Benjamites, but they couldn't find them there either. When they had come to the land of Zuth, Saul said to his servant who was with him, Come, let us return, lest my father cease caring about the donkeys and become worried about us. He said, let's stop here because we've been looking all this time. My father's not going to be worried about us, so let's, let's, just, let's just head back. So the servant says to him, he said, Look now, there is in this city a man of God, and he's an honorable man. All that he says shall surely pass. So let's go there. Perhaps he can show us the way to go that we should go. Then Saul said to his servant, But look, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread in our vessels is all gone, and there is no present to bring the man of God. What do we have? And the servant said to Saul again, and said, Look, I have here one-fourth of a shekel of silver. I'll give it to the man of God to tell us our way. Formerly in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, he spoke thus, Come, let us go to see the seer. For he who was known as a prophet was formerly called a seer. Then Saul said to his servant, Well said, let's go. So they went to the city where the man of God was. See, the servant said to Saul, hold on. I know your dad might be nervous. Your dad might be looking for us. But in the city, there's a man of God. This guy speaks all the stuff about God. Let's go see him and see what he's got to say. He can tell us where we should go. And Saul's like, man, I don't have anything with me. All our bread's gone. They typical to bring a gift to the man of God to get a direction on where to go. So Saul was like, wait a minute, time out. I, I don't have anything to give this guy. So the servant reaches in his pocket and pulls out a quarter of a shekel, which in this, in this day and age, I think is about 30 bucks if I looked it up right. And he says, I've got this. Let's take this and let's go. And Saul says, all right, let's do it. <laughs> See, they were out in the field going through the mountains up and down, all over the place, looking for these donkeys. Worried about where the donkeys were. They couldn't figure it out. Where are they? And they traveled for miles. If you, if you study out how far they traveled, they just kept going and going and going. Miles. Remember, they're on foot. There's no Uber. They're, they're, they're traveling as much as they can, right? And Saul says, time out. That's enough, man. We've got to go back. Dad's going to get nervous. See, the truth is, is, we're by people every single day that are traveling and searching and have no idea what they're actually searching for. And they'll go for miles and miles and miles. Circle after circle after circle, trying to find their way, trying to find what they're looking for. And all they need is a servant to say, hey, why don't we go look over here? Why don't we go look over there? That scripture that said, seek the peace of the city that you're in, and in it you'll find its peace. You've got to remember, you are significant in the kingdom of God. Regardless of who you think you are or what you think that your role is, God has a much higher role for you. I mean, you, you may put yourself at the lowest of the low, but God doesn't see you that way. He sees you from the royalty that he created you to be. So scripture says you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation set apart specific for this plan and purpose. But we don't see that. We see ourselves as the lowly servant. The one that's just supposed to do whatever the master says. Don't have any ideas. Just give me my list and tell me what I got to do. If you look at yourself that way, you'll constantly miss what he's trying to show you. We've got to adopt the mentality that the servant had. Jesus said in John, I think it's 15, he said, I no longer call you servants, I call you friend. What's the difference? 
A servant will do the list that the master gives him just to accommodate that list and do the things that are required of him. And once he's finished with that list, he's done. He'll sit down. A friend, a friend will do and do and do because of the heart for the other friend. There's a big difference there. This is the relationship piece that we're in. This is where the religious piece gets broken off. If you make your walk with him about I've got to do X, Y, Z, all these other things, and once I get that all squared away, then I'll be okay. Man, that's a lousy Christian walk right there. That's not what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be exciting. But when you have your friend at heart and you're that close with him, you'll do just because of who you are and just because of how much you love him. That changes everything. This servant decided he was going to not even worry about what if I speak up? Because don't forget, back then, servants were supposed to be seen and not heard. But on that particular time when Saul was sent out by his father, Saul happened to pick this particular servant to go with him. And as they traveled the mountains, and Saul had had enough, this particular servant cared enough about him to say, hang on, there's, there's a man of God here. Why don't we go see him? So scripture says that they actually turned and they headed towards that man of God. And when the, we're going off the notes again, heck with it. When they got there, they went in, they found the man of God. I'm going to cut this down for sake of time. They went in there and they found him. And the servant gave all that he had. Listen, this walk with him will cost you something but it'll cost you something that was never meant to fulfill you to begin with. You know what I'm saying? If you're really worried about that 30 bucks in your pocket, you're going to have problems. It's not what we're created to do. It's not how we're created to be. This is, this, it's not a money issue. See, this servant reached in. Now think about that. The servant reached into his pocket, pulled out everything that he had. Why? Because the heart of the master that was with him was more important to him than anything else. So it may have only been 30 bucks to him, but to God it was everything because he sacrificed everything he had. What happened with this guy? He took him into the city. He met the man of God. I'm, gonna, I'm cutting this down, guys. You can go read this later. He met the man of God, and that man of God took him and launched him as king. And you can read the rest of what happened with Saul, but it was in that moment of being lost in the wilderness with his servant when the servant actually spoke up and said, hey, you gotta go here and meet God. You gotta go here and meet this guy and he'll show you what God wants for you. It was in that place that everything changed. It changed an entire nation because a servant was willing to speak. A servant was willing to look past all the issues that he might have had. He was willing to say, you know what? I may not have enough, but there's something here that God wants to do. I know that there's God over there. I'm going to get you there. See, the truth is, is Saul was done. He said, I want to go home. Dad's going to worry about me. He started thinking in the natural. He started thinking about all the things that could be happening right now, what his father might be thinking. But because that servant spoke up, it pushed him beyond where he was originally willing to go. It doesn't say that the servant had to go back and think, well, maybe I should word it this way. Maybe I should say it that way. The servant just spoke up from his heart. We got to stop worrying about going to Bible school and making sure that we can memorize scripture and have all the right words to say and just start speaking from the heart. Scripture says that out of the heart, the mouth speaks. You got to get free in order to realize who you are and whose you are. The biggest thing that happened here is that this servant recognized the issue not as his own issue, 
but it was somebody else's issue that he was willing to co-labor with. He was willing to go with this guy. And if you read this, it actually says the word we. Let's go to the seer, and he might tell us where to go. He identified himself in the problem. It's my problem too. It's not just your problem. The donkeys are your fathers. They're your flock. I'm just a lowly servant. No, no, no. He said, let us go. And together, he'll show us what to do. So he recognized that he was in the issue with him. Come on, don't walk the streets of Fall River or whatever city you're in and look at people and say, you got issues, you got issues, you got issues. No, 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 no. They were created just like you and I were. They were picked up just like you and I were, that handful of dirt. And the breath of God went in and said yes, just like he did with you and I. So at some point, we have to pray for the city that we're in. Recognize this is the city I was placed. The family that you're in is where you were placed, which means those people are under your guard. And in their peace, you'll find your own peace. It's time to recognize other people's issues that are, as our own issues and really take ownership of them. You're not supposed to put them out on an island and say, here, figure it out. You need a Bible. God will tell you. He'll tell you what to do. You just set them up for failure. You get all these issues. Here's the Bible. God will show you what to do. Really? Come on. That's not what Jesus did. We forget that the New Testament, they didn't have the Bible. They had the Old Testament with them. We forget that it wasn't Father, Son, and the Holy Bible. It was Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the things that they spoke, they spoke from the heart. The things that they shared was what the Father was teaching them, what the Father was showing them. The things that they were walking in, though they didn't make sense in the natural, it was what Holy Spirit was prompting them to speak. They recognized the issues as their own instead of just somebody else's problems. Let's face it. The apostles could have just gone back to their regular lives and said, well, heck with this, I'm going fishing. Matter of fact, he did it at one point. Peter did that. Everybody says that. I love Peter. He does the same stupid stuff that I do. Well, which Peter do you love? The one who made the mistakes or the one that was actually sitting in front of thousands of people when he realized who he was and he gave a gospel message and people got healed and all kinds of stuff like that and free? Which Peter do you identify with? Because the one you should be identifying with is the one that was truly free and saw thousands get wrecked in the power of God. We were the old Peter before. Now we should be the new Peter. That's where God's trying to get us. He's trying to get us to that place. And it's okay. We're all in process. I get that. None of us are perfect, that's for sure. But at some point, we've got to get past our own issues and start taking on other people's issues as our own as well. Like brother, sister, all that stuff. I'm not saying we've got to get all Southern Baptist, Holy Ghost on you. Hey, brother, hey, man. I'm not saying all that stuff. But when you look at somebody, if you're looking down your nose at them, there's problems. If you're looking at somebody and say, that's why you need Jesus, you need to go look in the mirror. That's the stuff that has wrecked the church for years. We're supposed to look at them in the heart of a servant that actually cares for the master. Jesus only did what he saw the Father doing. He only said what he saw the Father saying. We should be doing the same. Because what Jesus did was walk in such a way that people that were the lowest of the low, he just put himself down with them and said, this is where I belong. That's where we belong. Because there's no difference. There is no difference. And I'm not just talking about street people. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the accountant that's stuck behind all his books and everything else, and he messed up because he... Forge some documents that he wasn't supposed to forge, and now he's going through all kinds of stuff. But we identify this automatically as a drug addict or somebody on the street. That's not what I'm talking about here, though that's part of it. There are people that have histories, and they're stuck in this rat race that we call life, and they have no idea where they're going. They're searching through the mountains for something, and they can't find it. It takes you and I to get by our own issues and start seeking the peace of the city that we're in because in that place you'll find your own peace. 
he'll exalt those who will humble themselves. So if I can get by my own issues, I'm going to lock arms with you and we're going to lift this thing up together. That's what we're created for. Such a relationship that we can actually hear his voice in the middle of somebody else's stuff, even when we have our own stuff going on. Well, time out. I got too many problems. I can't think about yours right now. Come on, man. Jesus knew he was going to get pinned to a tree and killed for everybody else, but yet he still continued to lift people up and to go after people everywhere he was. Why? Because it's what his father was doing. It was what his father was saying, and his heart was the father's heart. And 1 John 4, 8 says God is love. It's the very essence of who he is. So that's what he does is love constantly. Jesus is the visible image of the, vis the invisible God. What you see in God, you saw in Jesus' life. What did Jesus do? He lived out a life of love, completely poured out to those around him. That's what we're called for. That's where we belong. And no, you're not going to have all the answers. You're not supposed to. You're supposed to be the one that's plugged in to the power that has all the answers. So when I walk into the room, it's not this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. No, you walk into that room like this big helicopter full of LEDs because that's who he is in you. And it's not, I got to stay out of places that have the appearance of evil. No, that's the place that you belong when you're plugged into him. Because that's the place where everything gets fixed that's around you. See, this guy, Saul, was launched into his royal destiny because his servant was willing to take him where he may not have been comfortable going. You're walking by kings. You're walking by queens every single day. They just don't know it yet. And if you can see him that way, rather than somebody that's got problems and issues, everything will change. Everything will change. We've got to recognize ourselves in the issue as part of the solution. I'm there for a reason. And you can apply this to every single aspect of your life. Whether it's your family, your friends, your job, your church, it doesn't make a difference. Your school, wherever you're at, you can put this thing. You got issues. I got issues. But your issues are my issues. My issues are your issues, you poor things. That's what we're created for. This is a year that we will apply. I, I, I'm only speaking for the porch at this point. This is a year we will apply this to every aspect of who we are. Every aspect of it. every aspect of it because in 2019 we will rise we will rise and you guys understand exactly what that means in it as this thing rolls out but there is power in what God wants to do and he's going to come at us harder and harder and harder and harder because he knows what happens when God's people truly get it and they truly get free and that's okay Bigger levels, bigger devils. So now I got to be scared? Absolutely not. In the army, who's more protected, the privates or the generals? You got that right. And I'm looking at a bunch of generals. Father, we love you. We thank you for all that you're doing, God. I pray, God, for a grace over us right now, God. A grace to be able to walk in such a way that, that, that we do see ourselves in other people's problems. Not that we look down at them, but we see ourselves as part of the solution. Father, we thank you that you trust us like that. That you don't call us servants, you call us friend. We love you, God. We love you, Father. We thank you for your grace in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to pass out the, the bulletins for this week.